Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this, the third Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord. Please stand for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved indeed we are forgiven in the wake of God's forgiveness we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace Amen. Amen. As we gather this morning, our first hymn is, Will You Come and Follow Me, verses 1 and 5.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your Spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Again, welcome to worship on this sort of cool January morning. Sort of cool and a little windy, so I'm glad that you all decided to get up, look out the window, and still come and join us for worship. Uh, it can be a little more difficult on some days uh, than on others. Uh, just a few announcements to share with you this morning. Uh, the first is, of course, that our annual meeting is coming up on the 31st. We will meet here after the second service at uh, approximately 11.30 a.m. Uh, we will also be doing the meeting by Zoom, so if you want to join us, go home after this service and join us by Zoom, uh, you will be able to do that as well. We will have somebody monitoring the Zoom screen so that you can participate. Uh, from your home. Uh, also, just looking ahead a little bit, this week uh, our, our class on the book of Revelation uh, starts up really in full this week. And uh, if you are in the class, the books have arrived, they are available. So uh, if you're in the class, uh, please pick up, pick up your book before you leave this morning. Just speak to me after worship this morning. Uh, also, uh, Sue, did you have a couple of announcements you wanted to make regarding you? Uh, yes, um, the first week in the February Super Bowl uh, Sunday weekend, our junior high ministry will be um, partnering with ELC, ELCA World Hunger and we'll be having a super uh, bowl of caring fundraiser. So we'll be offering homemade soups and we'll ask you to bring a, canned, uh, a can of soup for our food pantry and you can pre-order your soups. Um, you can give me a call or you'll see a note that sending, uh, Barbara sends out to the congregation with all the information. So please uh, keep that in mind. Thank you. Okay, and I just want to alert you that when, when she talks about uh, the homemade soup, that's going to be made here in our commercial kitchen under the same conditions that uh, the, the health department requires of restaurants. So I don't want you to be concerned that you know we're just gathering soup from anywhere. Uh, it's, it's going to be made under, under good conditions. Yes, and we do have a certified food handler that will be present to oversee it. Right, thank you, thank you. I'm going to eat it, so. <laughs> also, uh, our confirmation classes continue this, uh, this Wednesday evening at, uh, at 6.30. Uh, we're doing our best to hold all of our, all of our confirmants together. And, uh, you know, they've been really good about attending those Zoom classes and, and doing Zoom meetings week after week after week. After doing Zoom meetings for some of them during the day for school is a difficult thing. So we appreciate uh, their willingness to, to keep going with this and, and we really appreciate all of the help that we get from uh, parents helping us to get through this time. You know, we're all looking forward to that day when we can gather again and take our masks off, and, and it's not too far off now. Those are the announcements that I wanted to share with you this morning. Let us continue our worship with the reading of the lessons. A reading from Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set it up and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us read Psalm 62 responsibly. For God alone, 
I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. God alone is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold, so that I shall never be shaken. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. Put no trust in extortion. In robbery, take no empty pride. The wealth and grief set not your heart upon. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay all according to their deeds. <clears throat> Jewish law, 
Or perhaps Herod and Herodias had ignored the law altogether, and he simply had taken her as his wife, and they were living in this adulterous relationship. In any case, it was a sordid affair, but just another in a long list of horrific things committed by the Herodians. They had claimed to be the rightful rulers of Judah, but from the sacrifice of pigs on the temple altar to sacrificing people, the Herodians were horrible and corrupt. Yet nothing happened in Israel unless they benefited, and neither priests nor people could prevent them. But John would have none of that. Still he confronted Herod about his infidelity, earning him the hatred of Herodias. And so Herod had John arrested. Now that didn't happen in a vacuum either. Herod was king because the Romans let him be king. He was a puppet, a vassal. He could be corrupt as he wanted to be. The Jews, from the Roman perspective, after all, weren't citizens. There was no need for kindness. As long as the Romans received their proper tribute and unrest was kept to a minimum, Herod could do as he pleased. And the Roman governors assured this peace of Rome, this Pax Romana, peace at the point of a sword. And Israel thus had been afflicted with Roman oppression. So that as we are told, people were in expectation regarding John. They were in expectation of a Messiah, someone who would finally deliver them from the oppression of all their rulers. So it was that after John was arrested, Jesus came declaring, the time is fulfilled. He came to the Sea of Galilee, and there he saw Peter and Andrew. He called them. He cried out, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I have to tell you, I've always had a little bit of a struggle with that particular metaphor. I grew up fishing. My brothers and I fished all of the lakes in New England, from Connecticut to northern Maine. Lakes, ponds, streams, rivers, brooks. We went after everything. We went after trout, landlocked salmon, bass, herring, shad. And then in the waters of Long Island Sound, we fished for blues, bass, flats, halibut, porgies, perch, whatever was out there, we fished for it. And the fishing metaphor works if you're a fisherman. But if you are a fish, the metaphor doesn't work out so well. In his book, Binding the Strong Man, Chad Myers, looks at this fishing metaphor and suggests something different than what we are used to hearing. He places Jesus' call to the disciples to come and be fishermen in the context of three readings from the prophets Jeremiah, Amos, and Ezekiel each a symbol of how God's disapproval of Israel works itself out. For instance, in Amos, we read, The Lord has sworn by His holiness, The time is surely coming upon you, when they shall take you away with hooks, even the last of you, with fish hooks. That is in response to the corruption of Israel's leadership and God's promise that every one of them 
will be fished out. And the prophet Jeremiah writes, I am now sending for many fishermen, says the Lord, and they shall catch them. For my eyes are on all their ways. They are not hidden from my presence, nor is their iniquity concealed from my sight. So Myers places Jesus' call of the disciples in the context of the words of these three prophets. So he sees it a little bit differently than we normally see it. And so you've got to ask the question, could it be that Jesus is actually invoking these metaphors from the prophets to invite the disciples to join him in fishing out corruption and sin, pulling up the nets from underneath those who have been the beneficiaries of unjust privilege, favor, and corruption? Might it be that Jesus, in calling the disciples, is inviting them and inviting us to join him in making a hostile world less hostile, making an unjust world less unjust, making it so that the poor aren't quite so poor and have enough to survive, and turning the world upside down so that God's reign of justice and peace are established. In Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Jesus certainly would have found an eager audience. They knew something of oppression because they lived it from day to day. They saw their friends jailed, sometimes tortured and murdered. They paid the taxes that were so oppressive that they couldn't escape poverty. They lived under religious leadership that was oftentimes, or they lived under religious leadership that, that had acquiesced to the oppression and, in fact, oftentimes assisted it. They knew what it was to have so many rules and regulations from their leaders that their hopes were always dashed. They were ready for change. And Jesus' call was compelling. If we hear that call in the context of the prophets, Come and follow me, and I will make you fish for people. It was compelling. And not just on an intellectual level, but in an I'm willing to leave what I'm doing behind. Because this opportunity, this Kairos moment, is one that may never come again, and it's something I have to participate in. Perhaps we're living in just such a time ourselves. No, we don't have a Caesar and we don't have a Herod, but we have a pandemic that has taken over 400,000 lives. And we know about the grief that follows. Again, the other day I had the news on and I was watching one of those food lines in another state where hundreds of cars were lined up. So we know something of the economic upheaval and the stress that it is causing in people's lives. It's hard to imagine waking up in the morning and wondering if you're going to have food that night to put on the table for your children. We all know about the stoking of fears resentment and divisions, it is all around us. We've seen something in these days of the reality of racial injustice. And you've got to think in the midst of all of this that change would be welcome. Hope would be welcome. And that all people would welcome something that is life-giving rather than death-bringing. You and I, as we gather 
for worship on this Sunday morning, we know something that a lot of people don't know. God is still at work. Jesus still comes down to the seashore and invites us to follow. And maybe for us it isn't so much a matter of just throwing our nets away and walking away. Perhaps we can continue in our daily work. Perhaps for us it's a matter of leaving behind what we have come to know as normal. Perhaps normal is one of the things that has brought us to the place of crisis. After all, for 400 years, racism in this country has been normal. When you think about how women have progressed in our society, inequality has been normal. Environmental degradation has been normal from the chopping down of all of the forests to pulling from the ground every last drop of oil to the exploitation of every waterway to the air that we breathe. Perhaps we're not being called upon to upend the leadership that we have, but perhaps we're being called upon to live out this Kairos moment, this moment that God has brought us together in. Perhaps it is one of those moments when we are receiving an invitation to do something different. To look at the world around us and to understand that it needs to be changed and to know that God is calling us to be the change agents. <coughs> Jesus is inviting us and accounting us worthy, worthy of God's attention, but more than that, worthy of the gifts that we need to do the work to which we are called. In a year where there is so much healing that needs to be done, so many challenges that need to be addressed, so many injustices overturned and writing. It is you and I who have received the invitation to come and follow Jesus. He is inviting us to do this great work. And I believe that even as much as we will be challenged in 2021, with all kinds of difficulties, we are nevertheless living in God's time. In a time that is fulfilled. That is, Jesus has come to this place. To this lake shore. To this house of prayer we so affectionately call the Fish Church. And he comes to once again extend the invitation to follow. And I believe, as we always have, that in accepting God's invitation, God will give us also the gifts that we need to do the work our Lord intends, the gifts of hope and compassion, the gifts of love and forgiveness, the gifts of empathy and sympathy. And that because we will always receive the gifts that we need, we will always find new ways to care for and being a blessing to the world God has created. And I have faith, and I hope you have faith, that if we are called to give up our current notions of what is normal, it is because God 
is going to provide a new and better normal. A new normal where love and peace, justice, and equity prevail for all God's children. A world in which the kingdom of God is truly at hand among us and because of us. Because we've left our nets in the boat and we've begun to follow Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all of our Standing guard our hearts and keep our minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Have 
Have mercy, O God. For those who are sick, distressed, for the outcast, and all who await relief, especially Annie, Nick, Alex, Bill, Ruth, June, James, John, Anthony, Maureen, Bob, Happy, Pat, Linda, Olivia, Susan, Eleanor, Diane, John, Ed, Arlene, Chrissy, Faith, Charles, Will, Eric, Lori, David, Bob, Grace, Tom, James, Jacqueline, Ken, that in the midst of suffering, God's peace and mercy surround them. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who mourn, especially the family of Harry Grill upon his passing, and the family of Ruth Hampson upon her passing, that God's love and his consolation surround their families and bring them peace and consolation. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our Trinity Lutheran Church and community, for families big and small, and for the organizations that meet here during the week, that God would guide all of our ministries. God, help us to model servanthood in all our relationships. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for our ancestors in the faith, whose lives serve as an example of gospel living, that they point us to salvation through Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Please rise. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth fruit from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered as one in the body of Christ, we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.